Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week I'm going to talk to you about how our fears create our reality. And I have spoken about this before, and if I can find it, I'll copy the link into the show notes below. But I wanted to share it because it's something that I see happen so often. And recently I spent some time with somebody who I know has been through an abusive situation in their past. I saw the, the hurt and the fears that she has inside. Um, I saw the way that she reacted to life, recreating the trauma that she'd felt over and over again. And I wanted to share it because if anybody else has been through something similar, it might help them to understand why it's so important to do the work around these things and why it's so important to face our fears because otherwise we recreate them again and again and again in our lives and we think it's the other people, but most of the time it's actually us. And that's not to say that I think that somebody who's been through abuse, it's their fault that they were abused, absolutely not. But the recreation time and again into the future is something that they can change but they can't change it unless they know about it. And that's why I'm creating this today, because I'm hoping that if you have been through something similar, that by listening to this, it might get you to see a pattern that you've started to create in your own life. And it might give you pause for thought, that you might seek help, or it might help you to, to sort of look at your pattern and to see how you can behave differently that might create a different experience for you. So this friend of mine, because of everything that they've experienced, when they're interacting with other people, especially men, because it was a man that she experienced the trauma through, um, what she tends to do is she becomes very suspicious and she becomes very um, over-analytical and overworks the situation in her mind. Um, and I can speak about it because I was there and I saw the situation unfolding. So I saw both sides of the story. And it was a situation that under normal circumstances, most people wouldn't have reacted to. Most people, they might have been a little uncomfortable with it because it got a little bit sort of heated, but it's not something that they would have held on to. They wouldn't have sort of two days or three days later come back with the same experience and started presupposing what that person thought or was thinking about them. It would have been something that would have blown over and just disappeared into an experience that happened. But this particular person, because of the trauma that's happened to her, she gets very upset, understandably, and because of that, she can't let go of what's going on. And she starts to get anxious and overwrought about the situations that she experiences. And by doing that, she has, and very courageously, has decided to try and stick up for herself, to, so, to confront what she sees as these sort of um, highly charged situations. The problem is, that they're not as highly charged for everyone else as they are for her. Understandably so, and none of what I'm trying to say is meant to be critical. It's just really sharing a pattern with you so that you can, if you've experienced something similar, can see it in your life and make different choices. So by confronting people around this issue, because she hasn't dealt with it, and because she's coming from a space of fear, all that happens is that she escalates what's going on because the person she's confronting doesn't understand why it's even an issue. She confronts this person in a highly energized state, a highly emotional state because of everything she's gone through. So all it does is sort of create this expansion of something that was quite minor into something that's quite major. And what happens is when that whole thing is blown over and they've said words that they didn't mean, and she goes away from it, all it does is confirm to her the beliefs that she has around men and the situation that she experienced in the first place. And even though I know that she's trying to come from the right place, she's trying to face her fears and she's trying to deal with them. I can understand why the person receiving her way of dealing with it is very confused and doesn't understand. Because most of the time, they don't know that she's been through what she's been through. They don't know what she's experiencing, her, her worries, her fears, her anxiety around it all. All they experience is somebody who suddenly over explodes over something that to them does is quite minor. Something to, that to them they've done or said to many people and it's been of little consequence. And therefore they think that this person is irrational and slightly manic. 
and all of these other things, which they say in the heat of the moment. And that just makes the, the person that I know, the one that suffered with the trauma, feel even worse about herself. So it's an ever evolving, expanding issue, unless the initial fear, the initial trauma is dealt with. And that's why to me, it is so important that we deal with our fears, that we face them and that we work through them. Because otherwise, not only do we have to still deal with the fear that we're going through, but we recreate it over and over and over again in our lives. Not because we mean to, but because we are reacting to that fear and from that fear. And whenever you react from fear, then you recreate the thing that you fear. I've seen it over and over and over again in my coaching sessions with my clients. And it's one of the most heartbreaking things because it's inescapable unless you can see what you're doing. And I hope that by sharing what I've shared with you today, that you might see some of the patterns in your life that'll make you stop and have a look and then learn to act by what you want to create rather than react from the fear that you've been express, ex, um, experiencing. And this is really what I want to speak to you about now, is that when we feel a fear, it can be very hard to ignore that fear or wipe it away or whatever else. But when you realize what it is that you fear, simply just sit with it and almost in your mind, allow yourself to play out how you would normally behave if you were reacting from that fear without doing anything. And then just Imagine how other people would react to you in that space, how they would experience you if you were coming from that place of fear. And then ask yourself, in this situation, what would you most want the outcome to be? Um, for me, if it was in a work situation, I'd want a comfortable and accepting working environment, um, a joyful place to work in. So then I would ask myself, so what do I need to say or do to create that? And then if I want to, then I would go into a conversation with somebody else from that space, the space of wanting to create a joyful and happy and pleasant working environment, rather than reacting and coming from defense, justification, um, protectiveness, um, trying to face the world head on. Because although both are actions, they both will have very, very different outcomes. I hope this has helped you in some way, or if you know of anybody that you think it might help, please pass it along. Um, as usual, you know all my links and stuff are in the show notes below. If you're interested in coaching with me, or if you're interested in any of my online courses, the links are below. And I'll try and get the, the episode link to the other one when I spoke about fear and pop that in the show notes below as well. So much love from me to you and have a fabulous week. Bye-bye.